Hello, I'm Dr. Don Love Karatko, or more widely known as Dr. K, and welcome to Entrepreneurial Insights with Dr. K, where we bring you the thoughts and insights from the entrepreneurial world, insights that matter for our future entrepreneurs. In today's segment, we are proud to feature one of the most successful female entrepreneurs that broke through gender barriers, Jody Bondi Norgard, founder of Dream Big Toy Company. Jody, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, I want to uh, read your bio a little bit so okay. people kind of know. Sure. Um, Jody is a, an expert in creating change and breaking gender stereotypes. She's the founder, as I mentioned, of a Dream Big Toy Company and creator of the award-winning Go Go Sports Girl line of dolls, books, and apps for girls encouraging healthy and active play over fashion and body image. In October 2016, the Go Go Girl Sports Girls brand was acquired by Jazzwares, an established cutting-edge toy company. She has been featured on national media, including the Today Show, Forbes, Shape, Runner's World, Chicago Tribune, New York Times, and Huffington Post, just to mention a few, although never on this show, so this is very special. <laughs> um, she is a, a keynote speaker, an entrepreneur, a consultant, an activist in the movement pushing media and retail to do a better job portraying girls beyond stereotypes. So we are truly pleased to feature her at the IU campus today. So. I've got a few questions, Jody, if sure, I may, yeah. because we certainly want to feature some of uh, your insights uh, uh -huh. on the show. So the first is, so what was the inspiration to create the GoGo -Go Sports Girls line of dolls? Okay, so uh, I was at a toy store with my nine-year-old daughter. She was nine at the time. <laughs> She's graduated from IU since then, so it was <laughs> a long time ago. But she was uh, had on her soccer uniform. And uh -huh. I'm telling you this because she, like she looked like a normal kid on a Saturday afternoon. Right. And so we were running into the toy store because we needed a birthday gift for her. She was attending this party. So I'm frantically going up and down the aisles when a line of dolls just stopped me in my tracks. They had on short skirts, crop tops, belly button ring, big mm -hmm. hair, lots of makeup. I mean, I look at my daughter, who looks like a normal kid. Mm -hmm. I pick up one of these dolls, <laughs> and the name on the hang tag was Lovely Lola. And then I, I, I literally had a fit in the, in the store, and I started picking up all these other dolls in the line, and it was Dazzle and Destiny and Sizzle and Sue. Oh. And, I mean, it just went on and on. They were just, like, trashy Jeez, <laughs> dolls. Yeah. And I'm like, what are we marketing to our girls? Mm -hmm. So I bought the doll, and I brought it home to my husband, and I said, hey, listen, I am sick and tired of the negative images that are marketed to girls, and I think I can do something about it and create a positive image product that encouraged girls to be healthy physically, mentally, and emotionally emotionally through sports and wow. physical activity. So it was, you know, there were moments that led up to that, sure. but that was like the... The, the epiphany the, for you. Exactly. It <laughs> right. was like, you know, the volcano uh, exploded. Yeah. But it was, you know, there were many gender issue or, you know, sure. stereotypes that I recognized, but yeah. sometimes, you know, you recognize things and you just push them aside right. because you don't know how you can change it. Right. Until I met Lola. Yeah. <laughs> what a great entrepreneurial moment, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. to now, like you say, recognize the need that's out there. Right. Yeah, that's right. fabulous. Um, second question. So after being successful now with, with this line of dolls and everything, um, why do you continue to push so hard um, for portraying girls beyond these stereotypes? I mean, I, I know you're really pushing hard. It's, it's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> when I started this business, you know, I, I, I wanted to give girls a healthy product. Mm -hmm. uh, what I didn't realize was this battle I would begin to fight. Mm. Um, this, uh, you know, changing uh, an industry, you know, or, or, you know, trying to change mm. something in our culture, you know, is, is very hard. Changing stereotypes is very hard. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, oh, everyone's going to think I'm right, right? Like, oh, look at these sure. awful images that are being portrayed to girls that, you know, undermine women and girls, you know, different, you know, stereotypes and ads and products and books mm -hmm. and things like that. Right. You know, it, it was like I'm now I'm, you know, m my glasses are on and I, you know, I had this heightened sense and right. I'm like, this is all making sense. And yes, I make sense to everybody else. Well, not so much. Oh, Not so much, yeah, and, and, and so I continue to push this uh -huh. so to educate and to hopefully, you know, to educate men and women and to hopefully, you know, empower and inspire women and girls to uh, have right. the confidence right. to uh, move forward and do great things. So if I can build on that a little bit, mm -hmm. can you relate an instance or two that were, I wouldn't call them failures, but roadblocks mm -hmm. specifically and mm -hmm. how you overcame them? 
Sure, sure. I, I did have, you know, many roadblocks. Mm -hmm. um, but one in general in particular is so when I went to Toy Fair to launch my my product. Right. It's in New York in uh -huh. February. So my line of dolls in 2009, I had nine of them. And I thought I had the next best thing. Sure. And then I had so many uh, buyers come up to me and say, oh my gosh, what a great product. Mm. Oh, I've never seen anything like this. My daughter plays soccer. She would love Soccer Girl. And I said, great, how many would you like to buy? And they're like, no, 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 no. We're not gonna buy it. Holy cow. And I'd say, well, why? You just said your daughter would love it. And they'd say, it's not fashion. Girls like fashion. Oh. Can you create a fashion doll? I'm oh like, my gosh. oh, that's my point. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are a thousand <laughs> fashion dolls out there. You know, as a mother of a daughter and as a woman, I am positive oh. girls like more than fashion. Mm -hmm. So that was what I heard over and over and oh over for gosh. five years. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. so. For five years. So I had to really persist. Yes. Boy, talk about a roadblock. Wow. I know. It was and really unexpected, really. Oh, totally yeah, unexpected. Yeah, right. yeah. Totally. I mean, it was really mm. hard, and, and it made me sad on multiple yeah. levels. Yeah. And that's what made me really battle even more for women and girls when I heard that. I love the amazing persistence. That mm -hmm. is fantastic, you know. Yeah. So do you have more entrepreneurial goals ahead for you? Well, you know, my, I, I, I don't want to start a product again. Okay. I think my husband would, like, lock me in a closet <laughs> if I did. <laughs> but I, I, I don't want to start another product. But, you know, I guess my next entrepreneurial journey is on this, uh, you know, speaking tour and, and, okay. and wanting to reach as many uh, women and girls. And I do still work with the company that bought uh, uh -huh. my product, okay. uh, Jazzwares. Mm -hmm. I have a 5% interest still, okay. and I have creative input. Oh, and nice. so in 2019, uh, we're relaunching uh, the new design line throughout the world. Oh. So we're working hard on that right now. So you are keeping your fingers in that I know. World, I'm you know? excited that I had that arrangement. Yeah, which allows you to still have some say, you know, mm -hmm. so this doesn't drift off into the wrong... Yes, but it's not my money anymore. You yep. know what I mean? I don't <laughs> right. have to deal with China and manufacturing and, you know, those logistics. Yeah, you get the fun side of it. Which I is do. I feel good. like I now have a really great team, so <laughs> it's great. good. Um, so as we look out, a lot of our students are watching this. You know, what, what advice would you give our young aspiring female entrepreneurial students here at the Kelly School of Business? Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, it, it's interesting. Uh, it, when I speak, I, I never want to tell, I, I never want to come off as like, I feel like one gender is, you know, better mm -hmm. than the other mm -hmm. by any means. Right. But I, I, we need some tools to close this gender gap. Right. And, you know, how do we do it? Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, that, that unfortunately in the, the race of life, the starting line is different for women. And the road, you know, their track is just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do we close this gap? There, for female entrepreneurs, there have been so many different um, uh, resources in, put in place in the last decade to right. help women. So right. it, it, it just utilize those resources like, mm -hmm. like there's no tomorrow. I mean, I, I became part of Walmart's uh, female or uh, women's economic empowerment initiative. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other, you know, uh, you know, venture uh, capitalists that are looking to invest in women. Um, I mean, there's so many resources out there right. and just always ask questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is for any entrepreneurs. Always ask questions and believe in yourself. And there are going to be so many people who say, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. No, that's a weird idea. Why would uh -huh. you do that? Right. Well, you're the ones thinking outside the box. You're the one creating change. So believe in yourself and surround yourself with people who believe in you. That is great. As you said that, I just thought of one more thing I wanted to ask. And that sure. is that uh, and, and I think that's part of your purpose. Do you think now, when you mentioned the resources and the things that are out there, and it sounds like things are improving, mm -hmm. but it's one now of awareness mm -hmm. for the young female mm -hmm. entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely awareness. And, you know, it's just, it's just closing that gap. Right. And it's just educating people on why there is this gap and, and you know, certain, you know, resources, you know, women need and, and, and men. But, you know, there, there's lots of statistics out mm -hmm. there that go to show that, right. you know, men are preferred at times for certain, sure. you know, entrepreneurial financial assistance yeah, yeah. versus women. Right. So 
uh, yeah, but just, you know, in support mm -hmm. for women, support one another. Uh, let, let's see how far we go, <laughs> you know? Well, I, uh, I commend you not only on your successful entrepreneurial uh, venture, but the entrepreneurial journey that you're on now, mm -hmm. which is really helping this awareness for our, our young oh. female entrepreneurs. So, um, thank you. My, my congratulations. Well, thanks for admiration. having me. Thank, really, thanks for having me. Now, it's been great to have you on this segment, uh, sharing those thoughts and insights with, with our students. So, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank you. Well, that does it for this segment of Entrepreneurial Insights with Dr. K. This and other interviews can be found on the Johnson Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation website. That's at kelly.iu.edu forward slash J-C-E-I. That's kelly.iu.edu forward slash J-C-E-I. So until next time together, my very best wishes for all of you, and always remember to make each day truly an entrepreneurial day. Thank you.